visit www.ashbridgesbay.ca backslash BE dash whiteboard for a navigable interface to all of our whiteboard drawings. The following video contains excerpts from our Day 1 Part 2 UC on C-Series Rack and Cable Playbook. For a complete configuration guide, subscribers can download the playbook from our website. Welcome to our drawing. Day 1 C-Series Server Deployment for Cisco Collaboration. SIMC Configuration and Use. SIMC stands for Cisco Integrated Management Controller. SIMC provides us with the GUI we need for managing our C-Series servers. In this drawing, we'll describe the tasks required to configure and use SIMC. Here are the day one tasks for Cisco Collab on C-Series. On day one, we deploy the C-Series server itself. On day one, we also deploy the hypervisor, our ESXi host. Only a subset of the tasks are required for BE deployment. We'll run through everything for UC on C-Series. The Cisco Integrated Management Controller can be configured after the server has been racked and cabled. SIMC configuration tasks are Attach console connector to the C-Series management connection. Use the SIMC configuration utility to configure SIMC networking and password. Access the SIMC GUI. Validate the server build. Make sure you got what you ordered. Configure the server, hostname and DNS, NTP, and power policies. Finally, launch the KVM console. A console connector is shipped with the server. C220s have a server management connection for keyboard, video, and mouse, KVM, on the front of the server. The console connector plugs into this connection. Here's a better view of the management connection on the front of the C220 server. Use the console connector to connect to the management connection on the front of the server to gain access to the server console. When the server boots, this is the first screen you will see. Press F8 to enter the SIMC configuration utility. Use the configuration utility to configure the following. Set the NIC mode to dedicated. Configure a static IP address. Deselect the VLAN enabled checkbox to disable trunking. For NIC redundancy, check the none box. Enter a new password. Press F10 to save the configuration. The default SIMC password for BEC series servers is password. Here are the NIC modes for the LOM card. We are using the leftmost port on the LOM card as a dedicated port for server management. Don't worry about the other modes. We are using the three LOM ports independently. If a port on the LOM fails, there is no failover by the C-Series to a different port on the LOM. If the SIMC port fails, you have no access to SIMC for server management. This is not service affecting, but obviously needs to be fixed as soon as possible. The other two ports will be teamed within VMware. Wait a minute or so and press the refresh key, F5. The network settings are now configured and you should be able to access SIMC. Press Escape to exit the SIMC configuration utility and boot the server. Navigate to the server IP address to access SIMC. The default username is admin and the default password is password. Enterprise 20 changed this when SIMC was configured using the SIMC configuration utility. Log in using admin and the password you configured. Here's what the SIMC GUI looks like. There's only a few things you need to know about SIMC to deploy a C-Series. On the left of the window is a navigation pane. There are three tabs. The Server tab provides information about the server. When you log into SIMC, you land on the Server Summary page. The Admin tab allows you to do things like configure users and network information and upgrade the firmware. The Storage tab lets you inspect the server's drives and configure RAID. In the Server Properties section of the Summary page, you can see the serial number of the server. This is useful for TAC calls. The BIOS version is 1.5.1c. You should provide a description and click Save. The product name does not appear for our BE6000, but does for our other C-Series. It's always good to inspect your server status and verify that everything is good. You can do a quick inspection using the Server Status section of the Summary page. 
We'll look at monitoring C-series servers in a later drawing. In the SimC information section of the summary page, you can find the host name, based on configuration on following page, the IP address, the MAC address, which is always good to know, and the SimC firmware version 1.5.1b. You should always check to see if you have the hardware you think you ordered. It's unlikely that you'll have an issue, but it only takes a moment to check, and now's the time to do it. It would be foolish not to do this. You don't want to find out there's something wrong with the order when you are halfway through the application installation. Verify that you have the correct CPUs. Navigate to Server, Inventory, CPUs. C220 M3S SFF TRC number 2. You should have two 4 core 2.40 GHz E52609 CPUs as shown in the screen capture. C220 M3S SFF TRC number 3. You should have two 8 core 2.40 GHz E52665 CPUs instead. BE7000 C240 M3S SFF TRC number 2. You should have two 6 core 2.50 GHz E52640 CPUs. Verify that you have the correct memory. Navigate to Server, Inventory, Memory. C220 M3S SFF TRC number 2. You should have four 8 gig DIMMs in slots A1, B1, E1, and F1 for a total of 32 gig. C220 M3S SFF TRC number 3, you should have 6 8 gig DIMMs in slots A1, B1, C1, E1, F1, and G1 for a total of 48 gig. BE7000 C240 M3S SFF TRC number 2, you should have 8 8 gig DIMMs in slots A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, F1, G1, and H1 for a total of 64 gig. eBay added 32 gig to C220 M3S SFF TRC number 2 to enhance the lab environment. Verify that you have the correct memory. Then navigate to Server Power Supplies. For C220 M3S SFF TRC number 2, you should have a single 650 watt power supply. For C220 M3S SFF TRC number 3, you should have two single 650 watt power supplies. And for the BE7000 C240 M3S SFF TRC number two, you should have two 1200 watt power supplies. If you have more than 100 users on TRC number two, you may consider adding a second power supply. Verify that you have the correct networking, then navigate to Server Inventory Network Adapters. For C220 M3S SFF TRC number 2, you should have only the LOM card. The external Ethernet interfaces are the two leftmost ports, the two ports besides the SIMC port. For C220 M3S SFF TRC number 3, you should have the LOM card and an additional Intel i350 quad gig E card. For the BE7000 C240 M3S SFF TRC number 2, you should also have the LOM card and an additional Intel i350 quad gig E card. The MAC addresses of your Ethernet interfaces are displayed here, so they're easy to find. Here is a screen capture from a C220 M3S SFF with the additional Intel i350 quad gig E card. Verify that you have the correct RAID controller, then navigate to Server, Inventory, Storage Adapters. You should have one of the following RAID cards and the Flex Flash card. MegaRaid 92668i plus battery backup. MegaRaid 92666CV8i with TFM and SuperCap. Or MegaRaid 9271CV RAID card with 8 internal SAS SATA ports. Only option for BE7000. The health of the Cisco Flex Flash card will show degraded because there's only one Flex Flash card in the BE6000 TRCs. Cisco recommends hyperthreading, so we checked to see if it was enabled. We checked with Intel and hyperthreading is not supported for E52609 CPUs. Now we'll move on to configuring the server. On the Admin tab, select Network and view the Network Settings page. Set the host name, configure a DNS server, and save the changes. 
On the Admin tab, select Network and view the NTP settings page. Configure an NTP server. If the server temporarily loses power, we want it to power on when power is restored. On the Server tab, select Power Policies and view the Power Policies page. Set the Power Restore policy to Power On. Set the Power Delay type to Random. On the Server tab, select Summary. A variety of actions are available. Power On Server, the one that's grayed out. Power Off Server, Power Cycle Server, Hard Reset Server, Launch KVM Console, and Turn On Locator LED. Some of the actions are available through a toolbar. The toolbar includes a help icon. Click on Launch KVM Console or the icon in the toolbar to launch a KVM session. If you have a BE, then your ESXi host will boot and you can access the ESXi console. If you have a standard C series, then the server will boot to one of the FlexFlash partitions and you will need to configure RAID and install ESXi. CIMC is configured. You can access the server console using KVM and shutdown, start up, and reboot the server. Cisco recommends you run a full set of diagnostics. Do this next. Coming up next, Day 1, Cisco Collaboration on C-Series Server Deployment, Diagnostics, Server Configuration Utility. Thanks for watching!